Hi, everybody. Welcome again to Ivy English. I'm Bruce. I'm Angela, and I'm Wesley. Well, yesterday we took a look at two short articles with you. Today we have one normally long one called "The Shortest Distance Between Two Points Is Not Necessarily a Straight Line." 中文标题是绕弯路比较近吗？飞机路线大揭秘。Okay, we'll be explaining that in detail. First, please listen as I read through the entire article first, and then we will take turns、uh, reading every other sentence in English with Wesley doing the translation and explanation. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? Not necessarily. That depends on the scale of what we are talking about. True. The most direct path from one side of a room to the opposite side is a straight line. We can measure the span to prove this. However, when we use a much larger scope, a global scale perhaps, a straight line as measured on a map is not necessarily the fastest way to move between two points. How can that be? Most maps are printed on flat pieces of paper. The most commonly used is called the Mercator projection, which projects the spherical world onto a flat, two-dimensional surface, exaggerating the size of the northern and southern polar areas. Pull up a map, as you can clearly see, the island of Greenland, located up by the North Pole, is depicted as a huge landmass. As a matter of fact, it is merely Two thirds the size of India, which appears smaller as it lies much closer to the equator. This distortion of space on flat maps warps our impression of straight lines and of relative distances. As an example, suppose you want to journey from New York to Taipei. Using a typical Mercator projection map, you would assume that the best flight route. Would be by heading west via the continental U.S. and over the Pacific Ocean. In reality, that itinerary would be a considerable waste of both time and money. To show why, prepare a piece of string and get hold of a globe. With one end affixed to New York and the other to Taipei, pull the strand taut. Surprise! Now you'll have to concede that. The shortest distance is going north over Alaska and Russia, then southward towards Taipei. My question is, how do you find a string long enough? Ah, this is Angela. It's a joke. How do you find a string long enough? Ah, this is Angela. It's a joke. How do you find a string long enough? Ah, this is Angela. It's a joke. How do you find a string long enough? Ah, this is Angela. It's a joke. How do you find a string long enough? Ah, this is Angela. It's a joke. How do you find a string long enough? Ah, this is Angela. It's a joke. How do you find a string long enough? 因为线不够，可能你的到时候就落在西伯利亚了，回不到台北。Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? What we just read this sentence is a truism in mathematics, which is something that's observably and provably true. And so, but by putting the word "right" on the end of it, we're now questioning whether this is actually observably or provably true. Yeah, truism, 哈，这 T R U I S M, 哈 ，truism 就是一个大家都知道是对的事情，大家都知道是正确的一个事实，哈。所以这个地方前面这个句子前半部，或者是应该说是最后一个字之前呢，都是一个 truism， 啊，就是两点之间最近的是一条直线，这是大家都好像都知道，这当然当然是这样子啊，好，所以那英文怎么说呢 ？The shortest distance， 最短的距离 ，between two points， 在两个点之间最短的距离。Is a straight line, 哈，是一条直线。那这句话，这个大家在学的时候记得，那个 a straight line 有一个 a 在那边，好，所以两点之间最近的是一条直线。那讲完之后呢，哎，后面的这个 twist 在这里，突然问你说 right 是对吗？这一个 right 立刻就让你觉得啊，哎，哎，这是是是这样吗？就好像产生了怀疑了。Not necessarily. That means it may sometimes be true, but not at other times. That depends on the scale of what we are talking about. It depends on we need to know we need to have a condition, some other condition than what we usually think of. Say on a piece of paper, if you draw two points and then draw a line, the shortest distance between them, it will be a straight line. 
But that's a scale of a piece of paper. If we talk about other scales, that might not be true. 嗯，好，所以 not necessarily 啊，意思就是不见得哦，啊，两点之间不见得永远都是那条直，永永永远都不是直线距离哦。然后呢，接下来告诉你 ，that depends on that， 就是到底两点之间是不是直线距离呢？这个要靠什么来决定 ？That depends on the scale， 就是尺度或者规模 of what we are talking about。然后要看我们讲的是我们讲的这个东西的尺度，它的规模是怎么样啊？例如说。你是在一张纸上面的话，两点之间当然最近的这条直线啊，但是在更大的规模，如果说在宇宙或者在这个呃呃太太空，这个时候就不一定了啊。所以这一句话意思是这样子。True, the most direct path from one side of the room to the opposite side is a straight line. So now we've just upped the scale. We're moving the goalposts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Originally, we're talking about two points on a piece of paper. Now we're saying two points in a room. Although there is a subtle curvature of the Earth, even within a room,、mm. depends on how much gravity is in the room. <laughs> It does. Hmm. 好，所以他说这个主要看比例嘛。然后下一个 ，true， 的确，没错。The most direct path， 最直接的一条路啊 ，path 就是路径。From one side of the room， 房间的一边 ，to the opposite side， 到对面的那一边啊。也就是说，这个 opposite 就是相反的或者对面的。所以在房间里面，从一边到另外一边。那最直接的 path 的路径就是 a straight line， 就是一条直线。We can measure the span to prove this from one side of a room to the opposite side. We can draw a line or find some other way to measure the distance between the two points of a straight line.、Uh, the, the span is the area between two points.、Uh, you can also think of it. I always think of span as a bridge. The bridge connects two points.、Uh, the difference between the two points, or the absence of a connection between the two points, is a span. 嗯，好，所以 span 就是两点之间的那个呃区域。好，所以它可以表示 width 啊，就是这个宽度。它也可以表示 distance 距离，都可以。好，好像一个桥一样，两点之间，然后涵盖了一个区域。好 ，span。不，它主要是这个，就是算是一个度量了啊。所以他说 ，we can measure， 就是 we can, 我们可以量度啊。The span 就量度这个呃，我们刚刚讲从房间的一边到另外一边的这个距离哈、啊，来 prove this， 来证明房间里面两两面面两面墙之间最近的直的距离是直线。However, when we use a much larger scope, a global scale, perhaps a straight line as measured on a map. Is not necessarily the fastest way to move between two points. How can that be? Well, one part is that the world is round, <laughs> and a map is flat, and a map is a projection of that. But the other thing is, a piece of paper isn't the same thing as measuring the actual distance in the world. No, I would not use a piece of paper to measure the distance between Taipei and Kaohsiung, <laughs> much less Taipei and New York. Well, I mean,、yeah. if you walk, you put down the paper, and <laughs>、right. then you put down the paper again. You can count how many pieces of A4 paper there are. Yeah, right. Yeah. 好，所以你在在纸上面啊，来量度这个地理的区域之间的距离，这个是不可靠的啊。那我们能看到这个句，他说 ，However, 哈 ，when we use a much larger scope. 啊 ，scope 跟前面的 scale 在这里意思差不多哈。我们用比较大的尺度的时候啊，那或者用比较大的规模、比较大的范围来讲的话呢，啊，然后接下来啊一个 dash 的举例来说，例如说啊 ，a global scale perhaps 啊，例如说可能是一个地球的这个尺度规模，也就是说以地球的整个地球来看，在地整个地球来在来看，那 perhaps 就是举例的感觉，就也许我们有举这个例子的意思哈。所以 perhaps 也许我们拿地球来说吧。那那这个时候呢 ，a straight line， 那么一条直线 ，as measured on the map， 在地在地图上面量出来一条直线呢 ，is not necessarily the fastest way， 不见得是最快的方法 ，to move between two points， 在地图上面两点之间移动。所以如果是用地图来看的话，那就不一定两点之间最近的是直线的啊。How can that be？ 怎么会这样子呢？怎么这是怎么回事呢 ？Well, the second paragraph tells us how. Most maps are printed on flat pieces of paper, especially in school, the office, or even in your home. Actually, very few people have globes,、uh, reproductions of the planet Earth in in a ball-like shape. We have maps, maybe、uh, a collection of maps in a book. By the way, is called an atlas, A T L A S. 
A-T-L-A-S. But atlases are page after page after page of flat papered maps. 好，我们看到这个地方，他讲到说 ，most maps， 大多数的地图 are printed， 被印在什么呢 ？Flat pieces of paper 啊 ，flat 就平的 ，pieces of paper 就是纸。好，所以大多数的地图呢，都被印在平面的纸上。好，那刚刚 Bruce 老师讲到一个字 ，atlas。叫做地图集哈，通常是不止一张地图，好几好几张地图，把它定成一本。各位去图图书馆的话，就可以找到 atlas 啊。所以这个不同的那个字。Now the most commonly used、um, is called the Mercator projection, and the reason it's called a projection is that they're taking a round thing and projecting it onto a flat two-dimensional world. So we're a surface. We're taking a spherical round world and putting it. Projecting it onto a flat two-dimensional surface, so it's called a projection. It's it's understood that it's not a completely accurate picture, because what happens is they're what they're doing is they're kind of peeling up the points of the globe and pulling it to be flat, and then they're just filling in the space. So it makes it look like all of the land masses closer to the poles are much bigger than the ones in the middle. So, for instance, it de-emphasizes how huge Africa is. It makes、um, Antarctica and Canada and Greenland look super huge, and it's not accurate. But this is the most common projection that most everybody who's grown up looking at maps in the world thinks of the world like this. We think of Canada as super huge, and Russia as super huge, and Africa as, as not that huge. And it's a kind of a misunderstanding, really, of the actual rel- relation between these land masses. Hmm. Good. So we can see that he says. The most commonly used 就是最常用的哈，这个制作地图的一种方法哈，叫做什么呢 ？It's called the Mercator projection 啊，叫麦卡托投影法啊。Projection 就是一个投影，那 which 就是指这个投影法呢，它会 projects， 它会投影，它会发射啊。这个 the spherical world spherical 就是球状的啊，像球体的，也就是地球嘛。所以把这个地这个球状的世界把它。投射 onto 投射到哪里去呢？好，所以说 onto 是接这个 project 好 project 这个某个东西 onto 就把它投射到哪里去呢？投射到一个 flat 平面的 two dimensional 就是二维的 surface 一个平面的两度空间的一个平面。那分词构句，在这个时候它就会怎么样？它就 exaggerating， 它会夸大，它会加大 the size of， 它会加大什么东西的这个大小呢？它会加大 the northern and southern。这个北极跟南极的这个 polar areas 就是极地啊，会换就要说，所以你这种这种投射方法投出来呢，这个地球的这个呃北极跟南极就会变得比较大，因为这个是一个圆球体，把它投射到一个二维的平面。Pull up a map. No, that does not mean there's a map above you and you pull it down to look at it. It means to bring into the discussion、uh, or bring an object. Uh, like pull up a chair and、uh, mm-hmm. sit with us at the table. It's that kind of pull up. Bring something into play. Great.、Mm. As you can clearly see, the island of Greenland, located up by the North Pole, is depicted as a huge landmass. Greenland is off the eastern coast of Canada, and、uh, more or less belongs to Denmark. Greenland is many, many, many times larger than Denmark. It's near the North Pole, so on the Mercator projection, it is depicted as it is shown as it appears as a huge landmass. 好，所以 pull up 就是拿来用，好，取得，好，拿来一个，所以拿一张地图来的意思。Pull up a map 就拿一张地图来。Now, as you can clearly see, 你可以很清楚的看到这个呃。Uh, 格陵兰啊 ，the island of Greenland， 它是一个岛啊，其实它是一个岛，但很大的一个岛。那它的位置啊是 located 在这个北极 by the North Pole 啊，在北极边的这格陵兰呢 ，is depict 呃、uh, is depicted as depicted 就是它被描绘成为什么样子啊，主要叫做 is depicted as 它被描绘成一个 huge 一个很大 land mass 就是一块大陆啊 ，a continent 或者一个 large area of land 啊 ，surrounded by sea 啊，所以它是。被地图上面看起来，它是画成一个很大的一块大陆。As a matter of fact, Greenland is merely two thirds the size of India, which is not how it appears in the Mercator projection,、mm-hmm. but how it is in reality. And India appears smaller 
on the Mercator projection because it lies much closer to the equator. It's actually shown more accurately as its true size, and Greenland is just heavily exaggerated. Hmm. 好，所以 as a matter of fact， 事实上呢 ，it is merely Greenland， 只不过是 two 呃、uh, two thirds the size of India， 只不过是印度的三分之二的大小啊。Which 就是印度呢 ，appears smaller， 看起来比较小啊。As is because， 因为 it lies much closer to the equator， 因为它 lies 就是位置在于啊，它的位置怎么样？比赤道近得多啊，所以它就在赤道旁边，所以它看起来其实这个感觉比较比较小一点。This distortion of space that means、uh, Greenland's actual size and how it appears on a Mercator map are distorted. That it's not true. It isn't that way, and that's how flat maps make things appear on them. This warps. This gives us the wrong impression. Of both straight lines and therefore also of relative distances, how far one place is from another. Hmm. 好，所以我们看到它 this distort a、uh, distortion of space. Distortion 就是扭曲，所以这个空间的扭曲啊、uh, on flat maps 在平面地图上对于空间的扭曲。好 ，warps 就是 twist 啊，它例如说这个水的折射啊，或者热的折射，会让这个影像啊会有一点扭曲，所以它也是一点扭曲的意思。啊，会让我们这个看出来的东西跟原来不太一样哈，所以它会扭曲我们的 impression， 我们的印象 of straight lines， 直我们对于直线的印象啊，还有对我们对于 relative distances， 对于相对距离的一些印象都会被扭曲掉，因为有一个 distortion of space。Now, as an example, suppose you want to journey from New York to Taipei, as you do. 嗯哼 ，Yep, <laughs> frequently. 哈哈，所以呢。举例来说，假设你要从纽约到台北 ，journey 在这里是动词，哈 ，to travel somewhere 的意思。Using a typical Mercator projection map, you would assume, you would guess, you would suppose that the best flight route would be by heading west from New York via the continental U.S. across the United States, maybe crossing California, and then over the Pacific Ocean straight to Taipei. 好，所以呢。你如果用一个典型的啊，这个麦卡托投射的这种地图呢，你会 assume， 你大概就会假定啊，这个 the best 最棒的 flight route 就是飞行路线，会是你要 heading west， 你要往西飞啊 ，via 经过 the continental U.S. 经过美洲大陆，然后呢 over the Pacific Ocean， 然后呢这个跨越太平洋，你会觉得这样飞应该最近。In reality, that itinerary would be a considerable waste of both time and money. This would be the longer way to fly, which would waste your time and your money by paying for a longer flight.、Mm. In reality, 实际上呢 that itinerary itinerary 就是一个行程哈。你这样安排你的行程的话 ，would be 将会是一个 considerable 就是可观的啊 waste of Time and money, ah, it will waste your precious time and precious money. Ah, that English is Chinese, use waste. Ah, that use verbs. Ah, this English is usually used as verbs. A considerable waste of time and money. Ah, that waste your 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 time and money. And get hold of a globe. Come on, pull up a globe. Hmm. Ah, so this, this, you want to tell you, you want to know why. We tell you, you want to know why. 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 You want 好，那你一端 a fix 就是固定啊，在纽约；另外一端呢，固定在台北。然后呢，把那个 strand strand 就是也是线的意思啊，在这里。所以把那条线呢，把它 taut 就是把它拉紧 ，taut 就是 stretched tight 拉紧啊。那这个时候接下来怎么样呢 ？Surprise! Something happens that you don't expect. Now you'll have to concede. You'll have to admit that the shortest distance is going north over Alaska and Russia. Then southward towards Taipei, not across the continental U.S. into the Pacific Ocean over Hawaii, and then to Taipei. Hmm. Surprise! 就是哎，会让你很惊讶的事情哦。哈、啊，你会很惊讶的发现怎么样？你现在必须要 concede， 就是 admit， 你要承认。
the shortest distance 最短的距离是 going north， 你要先往北。啊，这个越过阿拉斯加跟俄国，然后呢，再往南 southward towards Taipei 到台北。So this is an interesting thing that there's actually a whole profession dedicated to figuring this out. These are the people who negotiate airline rights, airline air rights. And except for the fact that I re- I met a woman who does this for a living, I had no idea this was a job that existed. And it turns out that if you specialize in languages, this is a kind of job you can get. That's yeah, it's so cool. So she decided for no reason to study Russian in college, and now her job is to negotiate with Russians for airline rights over Russia, because airlines are very, very clear on this. That what the shortest distance between two points is a curved line over the surface of the gro- globe, and they know that the the more they deviate from that line, the more fuel they spend to go from one place to another. But and, there's this, and fuel is the number one cost of airline travel. Exactly, and so they want to save on fuel for sure. But one thing that hinders this is air rights. Every country owns the air over its territory, over its territory, and you have to get permission to go through. And also, other airlines also have the rights to go on certain routes. So you have to carve out a three-dimensional hole through space that you're allowed to fly for your airline. And whether if you're very good at your job, you save your airline money, and if you're very bad at your job, you cost your airline money. You're fired. Well, you know, some people win or lose in the negotiation game. But I'm like, I had no idea this is a profession you could do, and so this is a really interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, 好，这 Angel 老师就说，这因为有这样的一个现象存在，哈，所以有所谓的航权谈判的啊，这个人啊，专业人士。在航空公司里面，因为不同的航空公司啊，他们要这个呃找找到最省钱的一条飞行路线，那这个牵涉很广，还包括这个航权啊，包括这个空域权啊，你要飞越别人的国家啊等等的啊，还有这些协调需要很好的这个语言能力啊，外语能力，所以这也是一个很值得大家去呃去探索的一个蛮有趣的一个工作啊。那你如果做得好的话，那就会让你的航空公司省了很多的燃料的钱啊，那当然你的薪水应该是很好。Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Join us anytime here at Ivy English. Till the next time.